On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are back in the shop to try to troubleshoot my Jag that let me down in the worst, like the most disappointing way, as soon as we got the engine done and took it for a test drive. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo and today, like I said, we are going to try to troubleshoot whatever is going on with the Jag F-Type S after getting a new engine in it and everything was good to go. We took it out for that first drive, barely got around the block and it started misfiring. What on earth? Now, I phoned a friend and he said it's very common for them to have coil issues. You could be chasing a bad coil. Honestly, I haven't even checked the connectors on the coils. And the one thing that truly makes sense is a loose connection somewhere. So. I'm gonna get in there and unplug every single connector and plug them all back in, all the injectors, all the coils on each side. Hopefully we just find a loose one, that would be amazing. Then the car is good to go, but we're gonna go ahead and start by scanning it and see if there's anything wrong. The, the computer found there was no check engine light, flashing check engine light under the misfires, and then it just went away immediately. So there were no current check engine lights that were set and staying on the dash. It didn't give me a lot of help. I mean, I would, I would assume that the check engine light would illuminate and stay on for me. Let's scan it and see what the computer thinks. And we'll go from there on uh, troubleshooting it, get underneath the hood, unplug everything, plug it all back in, take it out for another test drive. Hopefully, good to go. On, we have to deal with some unfortunate beeping there. Sorry about that. We'll jump into diagnostics and wait for the VCI to connect. It'll be just a moment here. We should get a nice beep to tell us that we are connected to the car. There we go, we've got a connection, auto detect. Let's scan this bin and see what's going on with her. Whoa, this car is so upset. I've never seen a scan come back with every module having issues. Everything that's orange is reporting something and PCM has 10. Now I'm hoping those are all history codes from things being unplugged, um, but they could be fresh. We're gonna find out in just a moment. It's almost done scanning. We have some codes and let's flip through them here. So we've got uh, some history codes, intermittent codes, temporary. The only one that actually matters here is that actuator supply voltage A permanent. That one's kind of iffy right there, but we've got a bunch of temporary codes. The important ones are cylinder one and cylinder three misfires detected and persistent misfire catalytic converter damage. I mean, it was only running for two minutes, so calm down and uh, fuel pressure too low while cranking, that checks out. There was no fuel pressure when it started. The lines were empty. Uh, a whole bunch of fun stuff from the transmission, even though I think those are all just fine. It drove great. Bunch from the ABS, bunch from <laughs> instrument, parking brake, everything was upset. Uh, obviously the wheel module's upset because it was unplugged at first, but now it's plugged in. Windshield wiper, high-low relays of code, front windshield wiper park, I think the wipers work, so that's funny all right that's the codes we had and now it is time to clear all these codes and uh, start over so we're gonna let this thing wipe them all out PCM came right back reporting two codes which is exciting so I wonder what those are we cleared the codes I'm gonna go ahead and start it up and see how it runs I'm assuming the misfire will still be there because we haven't done anything to sort out coil or any other issues like that It runs perfectly, perfectly. Unbelievable. Look, I'm still gonna go check all the connectors, but it runs amazing. Not a single light on the dash now, other than left door open. I don't get it, what the deal is, Jag? Checking all of our coil packs here real quick. Probably the next order of business. There's a nice click, lock. Every single one, unlock, pull it off, reseat it. I'm just going through all of them. Did all the ones on the driver's side a minute ago, making sure none of these come off when I push on them. And then intake actuator circuit A said it was for the intake tuning circuit, but there is no intake tuning. There's not variable runners in this engine, which is very interesting. I mean, I would understand if it had variable runners or something crazy like that, but it does not. It just has the wastegate here, and the wastegate, I mean, it seems like it's working just fine. So I guess uh, the next steps go drive this thing again now that we cleared the codes. Uh, I'm gonna get it back out of the garage and hopefully we can keep burning out some of that coolant that was left in the exhaust. 
I remembered something that was pretty important uh, about the second I pulled this thing out of the shop, and that's that the gas, the premium gas this thing needs to drive on, is over a year and a half old. So we are heading straight to the gas station to fill this thing all the way up. It's basically out of gas, which is awesome. And hopefully that gets us somewhere towards uh, this thing running right. Well, it's been running all right so far. We've made it 1.3 miles with no misfires. So uh, we're gonna watch it on the Carly while we drive and see if it continues clearing up. I think we're getting close. Hopefully it's just driving the car a little bit. Here we go, we're risking it again. Nice and smooth so far. Time to go drive some back roads and see how she does. Well, nothing's leaking and it's running really well so far. Don't smell anything weird. So I'm gonna go ahead and charge the AC because I don't plan on pulling the engine again. So uh, drug the AC machine out, we're getting it hooked up. Let's give it some power and uh, we'll back it down and hopefully I've got enough refrigerant left in this to fill it. It has everything I took out of this. We've got the AC machine vacuuming the system down there. Are five minutes remaining, it's been uh, 15 so far. And then we've got to wait, leak check it, make sure it holds pressure. So while we're wasting time, I'm in here cleaning up the interior. There's these New York stickers in here. So we've got our plastic razor blade. And this stuff should come right off, but it does not come right off, I'll tell you that. Guys, I've got an AC machine. And AC machines make everything absolutely idiot proof. Like this is the easiest thing to use in the world. Okay, this one's actually kind of junk, but the better ones are way better. Like the one Johnny has, it walks you through every single step. Obviously, like I've worked on refrigeration systems my whole life for the most part, and I'm used to like kind of knowing what I need to do, but it's super nice to just have the screen there and it's like, do this, do this, hit enter, do this, and you're done. And it needs a bottle of refrigerant, it's out. So when I went to charge this, it was too empty. It only had four pounds in it, 3.98, and it would let me charge 0.9 because you can only go down to three pounds in the internal bottle. So I can't buy a bottle of gas because I don't have my uh, refrigerant certification. I know it takes like 10 minutes to get, but I wanted to get the big one. I wanted to get the worldwide or the global, and I didn't want to get the one that you just get to get, you know, 134A. There's a bunch of different certifications that you need. You can get the global and you can buy everything you want. So I wanted that one. <laughs> I didn't want to go for the baby one, so I just never did it. That's just where I stopped. But it means that I can't buy a bottle of refrigerant for this thing, which is absolutely nonsense because they sell this nonsense to everyone on the planet. Like it's somehow any different than a 30 pound bottle. So anyway, I got uh, 12 ounces here, which is a little less than a pound. I need to put 0.6 ounces in the system. So uh, that's where we're going with this. And I also had to buy a gauge to inject it because obviously I can't hook this one up to this because I don't have the tap that goes to standard uh, refrigeration hose. So it's just, uh, that's, that's what grinds my gears is that you can't buy a real bottle even though you know how to use it. I'm not gonna just go open up the bottle and dump it into the atmosphere. I know that's what you guys don't want, so just let me buy the bottle. Anyway, I had to buy this thing. And uh, I also didn't know these were resealable. I've probably thrown away about a million of these because they show up in flip cars all the time. Everybody tries this on cheap cars. They never try to fix it right. They always try this. And uh, they're always in the trunk and I always give them away or get rid of them. And uh, come to find out, you can just pull this off and reuse it. <laughs> oh well, gotta learn somehow. Get this bad boy hooked up. It's a bit of a reach. There we go. It says C instructions, probably because it is a little bit charged and uh, we haven't hit the compressor yet. So let's uh, flip the AC on, turn it to max and uh, go from there. Oh God, it's already cold. Yes, at point nine, it's freezing. Let's give it a hit. So we need to add about that much of the can. I 
The caps are back on our service ports. We got a little over half the can in there. It's blowing freezing cold air out. Let's go take it for another drive. And this time I can put the top up because it's a hundred outside. And it was not a very fun test drive. Well, it looks like it's running right now. And this ice cold AC is the ultimate way to test drive. So glad we got that done. No misfire at the moment. As you guys know, it was super angry about the wipers. So let's try those. Oh, no wipers. Look at that. Well, that's the next problem to sort out. That should be wiper spray. Okay. Well, we found a new broken thing. I guess the wiper relay is truly somehow messed up. We still can't go into our race mode. Special mode's unavailable. All we can do is turn on our exhaust. The cooling system is holding steady at 100C. Shout out to Carly for us uh, monitoring this on the fly. Use promo code WatchJRGO, or I'll throw a link in the description below for uh, Carly. Obviously, this is the first car we used it on, and it's doing great to let me monitor the car while we drive around. So we've got engine RPM there. We've got our long-term fuel trims on two banks. We've got our oxygen sensors on two banks. No one knows how to use, I, I, isn't everyone just used to looking at AFR? So here, get on it. Get on a little more. It's so fast, just effortlessly nasty fast. We are in Mexico, don't worry, don't worry. I know some people were concerned right there. Uh, snaps off shifts, seems like it's doing really well. I think it's still cleaning up a little bit. I think we still had some coolant and stuff we were dealing with in the cats. But before we start chasing all those down, I just want to get the misfires out of the system. So as long as we're done with the misfires, the car's solid and we can keep right on working. Well, this is a huge win. I can't believe clearing the codes and driving it is working. But if you guys want to see, I mean, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of throttle. We'll toss it in sport mode, get a couple of, you can have second gear, second gear. And we'll get on it a little bit. <laughs> this road is so rough. I've never been that fast down this road before. Uh, that was probably an iffy. That was an iffy decision. <laughs> Put it in first. We got traffic coming, but I trust this car now, so. Nice burbles. It just explodes through the shifts and it's so good. Oh, I love it. Ice cold AC, we won on the AC for sure. I pretty much nailed 1.4, 1.5 pounds. I think the charge is on point. Oh, it's so fast with the downshifts. You can go back to drive. And it uh, draws so much attention too. That guy just wouldn't stop staring right there. And the car's not even clean. It looks horrible, honestly, right now. So. The next order of business is sorting out the wipers and getting the detail done. I think detailing is obviously the next one because I want to drive it. Love the way the car is driving. It's really, really, really good. This is probably my favorite thing I've fixed. I mean, better than the R8 in every way. The R8, I hated driving. This car, love driving. It does everything like a nice modern car, blipping the throttle and super fast shifts for being a hydraulic transmission. Don't even have a dual clutch and it's awesome. What a car. And I think I'm gonna take it over to Dana and ask him to figure out what's going on with the special modes. I, there's nothing I can scan other than it does say service required. I'll probably run inside right now and try to clear the service indicator. Uh, only when it starts up it says service required. So I think it's ready for an oil change. We now have a TPMS light. Tires look great though. They are aftermarket wheels. So that kind of checks out. Um, Let's try to clear the service uh, minder here. And if that works, and we'll check the oil and everything like that. And it won't even let me check the oil with the engine running, which is so annoying. At the end of the day, we are doing way better than we were before with just a handful of codes left in the car, a couple of drive cycles in it, relearning the windows, clearing the BMS to set that up for my brand new battery. Just over and over and over, we've been going through this thing. And now we've got a report. Skip the odometer readings here. 
and there are just some things that you gotta have the big scan tool to do. The service interval resets on this are crazy, but I finally got that done. I got the oil one reset. It no longer says service required. And what do we have here? A bunch of temporary codes still. So invalid data from gateway A, and it does, uh, the gateway also reports an error, non-OEM calibration detected, uh, which is probably true. I do think this thing's tuned and also actuator supply voltage a circuit open i gotta figure out that one i'm worried about that one wipers that one's true we know that's true and also i do think the power steering being intermittent it's so heavy that it must have some kind of control thing that's not working exactly right and we also have this report of the secondary battery not working right i think the secondary battery is trash uh, i think it sat so long it killed it that's it that's all the codes we have i just tried to run the uh, dual battery charging tests on this thing and it just failed, I ran it again, failed. So that battery is typically used for start stop and it's a lithium that charges very quickly too. Um, I think that's the problem in the back. Doesn't matter, auto start stop is disabled and it never auto re enables. I think that's due to the fact that we have a much better uh, aftermarket tune on this thing. Well, I'm gonna keep driving this thing. So first I've got to do a quick clean on it. This is not the real detail. It just looks horrible from sitting for so long. Did you guys just see? Oh, it was my reflection. I thought I saw like a praying mantis dip out of the hood. <laughs> it's my reflection in the chrome. Uh, you can see how hammered this car looks. It is destroyed from sitting outside for so long. So we're just going to give it a quick foam, a wipe down, and that's as far as I'm going to go. And then the detailers will get it back so they can do an, an actual clean on this thing. But uh, for now, it needs to look a little bit better and let's check over the tires one more time i tried to check tpms but i wasn't getting a response from the gateway the tpms or the tpms module itself tires look great right before we went out i checked them all they're all at 38 psi let's make this thing look cleaner mostly the trunk it's the worst part it was actually up under the tree row the best outcome i could have ever asked for clearing the codes taking the thing for a drive put some new fuel in it and it running really well. Now, I don't think it's exactly perfect yet. I mean, obviously there's no more misfires, but we need to get a full tank of fuel through here. I'll probably run some uh, uh, Lucas fuel treatment on it or BG44K, even better. 44K would probably really help get these injectors clean. And I gave it a quick wash over here, just a, a rinse and a wipe down with the uh, wash mitt and rinsing it back off. And it looks a little better. It looks black. It doesn't look like mud like it did before but there's a long way to go. So soon we'll do a real detail on this, which will make it look black again. Right now it's like this oxidized grayish black. It's not deep at all. You can see the hood's a wreck. I mean, it's just, oh, this car is rough. It's had a terrible life. And back here in the back, you can really see how bad it is where it was under the tree row. Even after washing it, I got a lot of the mud out, but there are actually outlines of leaves in the paint from where they were sitting. So you can see this is just absolutely hammered paint. And it'll need washed again, clay barred, polished, probably two-step polish to fix the black. It's a big job, but the detailers have no issue with that. I am gonna go drive this car now that it's 80% uh, more presentable. I think it was trashed before, a little better now. There's no longer mud sitting under the spoiler. A little better. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchchairgo.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time great success yes the jag is alive freezing cold air and honestly the air in here is a lot colder than it is in the shop so i'm getting in this car right now and i'm gonna go drive it around until i'm not my shirt's not stuck to me anymore sounds ideal and uh then i think over to dana it goes i'm gonna be like hey man do your jag touch because i just want everything double checked and uh i want to make sure this car doesn't have any issues down the road also the oil it still won't let me check the oil I know I put enough in it, but it'd be great if I could check it on the display. It just doesn't want to come up.